Technology changes so quickly. Very easy to get outdated very quickly and become an old fuddy dud. We don't want to do that. We want to stay young. We want to stay relevant. We want to stay hip. We want to stay cutting edge. So what's trending? What is hot? What are the things that you need to know about when it comes to technology? What are the emerging trends? I interact a lot with people across industries, across different tech levels and disciplines, and I read a lot, but we love and we also hate tech sometimes. Sometimes tech doesn't go too well. This is today's tech fail. If you're as old as I am, you'll remember Blackberry. Not like the fruit. The fruits are great. I love Blackberries. They were the corporate enterprise device. Before iPhones, before Androids, there was these things called Blackberries. And then of course, Apple, Google came out, did their thing, and they wanted to stay hip and relevant, and they struggled. And they released this thing called a Blackberry Playbook. Essentially, it was a tablet, and it was intended to compete with the popular tablets on the market. And it did have some impressive features. Like it had a really, really nice, seven inch display, had dual core processors, supported Adobe Flash, all of these sort of cool things at the time. However, it had some significant drawbacks. Some things that were like, eh, maybe not. There was only a few thousand apps, but Apple, Google had a truckload more. They just were not able to do the stuff that they really wanted to, just couldn't compete. There was other issues around poor battery, slow performance, had limited connectivity options. I mean, they tried to lower the prices, they tried to do all these updates, release new apps, release new software. It just failed, unfortunately. Two years later, it fell flat on its face and BlackBerry announced, sorry folks, that's all. BlackBerry Playbook. Oh, one more quick thing before we get on to talking about top trends. If you've watched any of my videos, you will know that I love VMware. I'm a big supporter of VMware for virtualization. I love running VMware locally, on-premise, but I also love running VMware on the cloud. One of my favorite cloud providers is a private hosting company called Liquid Web. You can actually run VMware directly on their cloud and it's absolutely brilliant. And because it is a private cloud, it's fully managed. So Liquid Web, they look after the workflows. They take care of everything else. So all the cloud infrastructure, all of the operating systems, the services, you just look after your VMs themselves. They're also VMware professional solution provider partners. And all of their cloud solutions are VMware cloud verified. They have a great support team. 24-7, 365 days a year. So easily reachable if you ever need any sort of help. So check out the description of this video to actually get a link so you can sign up to Liquid Web. So there's heaps of different options available, heaps of different plans. One of them will definitely be helpful to you. And thank you so much for Liquid Web for sponsoring this video. What's the first one? AI, machine learning. I mean, this is a thing that has been around for a little while, at least people have been experimenting with it for a little while, but especially over the last number of months, maybe the last year, a lot more companies are playing around with AI more than ever, and it's getting scary. You've seen all those scary movies about AI taking over? Let's hope it doesn't get there, but it does make things very, very easy. The whole point of AI is to create intelligent machines, supposedly intelligent machines that can perform tasks that humans would normally perform. Automate stuff, understand languages, recognize images, making decisions, write an essay for you. But think of AI a little bit like your little robot buddy, little buddy that can just do stuff for you, your own personal assistant for absolutely everything. And it's doing a lot more than just helping you, but it's it's been integrated into a lot of systems, into a lot of platforms, into cars, all of this sort of stuff. Watch out, watch out for the future around AI. We've then got IoT, the internet of things. I mean, these things are devices that are just connected to the internet. Smart homes, lights, thermostats. There's stuff built into cars. There's stuff built into businesses that just work. You can set up timers. You can set up routines so that it can trigger certain things in an environment automatically. Lights, cameras, your fridge, smart fridge. Let's say you're running out of milk. I could tell you, you're running low on milk. You need some new milk. Smart toothbrush. Could remind you to brush your teeth for two minutes. Could let you know, you've been using this head. It's getting pretty grimy. Get a changer, get a new one. Other thing is new emerging network technologies, 5G. So 5G stands for fifth generation. Essentially it's the latest and greatest version of the wireless technology, right? And it's promised lightning fast, internet speeds, virtually no latency, the ability to connect to more devices than ever before. And because it's so fast, there's all these other technologies that you can now use a lot more freely, such as augmented reality, 
self-driving cars that have built-in 5G, allowing cars to communicate with each other and with all of the tech and infrastructure around it, making your roads safer, more efficient. And you can't talk about technology without talking about cyber security. Cyber security, data privacy, all of this hacking, like, it's all over the place. These are the things, the technologies, the products that protect us from the bad guys. The hackers, the cyber criminals who wanna steal our personal details, our personal information, and cause a whole bunch of digital chaos. If you think about it like a fortress, cybersecurity is like the walls, like the gates, the moats that protects the castle from invaders. You're talking about firewalls, you're talking about antivirus software, strong passwords, multi-factor authentication, all of these sort of things are essential to ensure that cybersecurity is done well. If you don't know enough about it, you need to know more about it. You've then got the cloud, the cloud, the cloud, the cloud. You've got AWS, you've got Azure, you've got Google Cloud, the three big ones. There's a whole bunch of other vendors, smaller ones that do stuff in the cloud, but essentially we're talking about cloud computing. It's about using the power of the internet to store, manage, and process all of your data. So instead of having to rely on your physical hardware, like hard drives, like servers, you now store all of that in the cloud. You have virtual cloud-based applications that are doing the same thing that your physical tech used to do. You know, you can access your files from anywhere. It's incredibly powerful. You wanna give more resources to a particular process, to a particular bunch of users who need to do a whole bunch of rendering or video editing. You give it to them for a weekend, spin it up. When they're done, you spin it down. And another one is the blockchain and really anything that is a decentralized system. So imagine that you're at a party, right? Everyone's passing around a notebook and when someone wants to add something to the notebook, they have to pass it around to everyone at the party to get their approval. And once everyone has agreed, the new information gets added to the notebook and the process starts all over again. Instead of a notebook, it's a ledger. Every transaction is registered on this ledger. It's a decentralized system of computers that work together to validate and record your transactions in a secure and in a transparent way. Each computer in the network has a copy of that ledger, and then every time a transaction is made, it gets verified by the network and added to the ledger. And that makes it really, really helpful because everybody has a copy of it, so that it's very, very hard to tamper with it because it'll then write it to all the other ones and someone will pick that up. Have you ever heard of the phrase, knowledge is power? Well, in the tech world, that is more true than ever. Knowing about your data puts you in a very, very good position in a business. So many companies have truckloads of data, data stored everywhere, data stored across multiple systems, years and years and archives and archives of data. Nobody has managed it. It's not named correctly. No one can find what they want to find. What do you do? You need to clean this sucker up and make it work better. And this is where big data and data analytics come into play. Simply put, massive amounts of information that are generated by people, devices, systems all around the world. The real power of big data comes from being able to analyze and make sense of it all. Sifting through huge amounts of data to uncover insights, trends, anything that could be hidden to make that data more meaningful and actually use that data for better purposes. Augmented reality. These things are like stepping into a whole new world. It's part virtual, it's part real. It's combining the two things together. Essentially it's like adding a layer of magic to the real world. It can be used to enhance everything that you do in your work. Interactive 3D models, human body stuff, right in front of you, you can see things, anatomy. You wanna do little walkthroughs to maybe where you wanna set up your office, a home, spare space. This is what it looks like. And it can be used for training people quite well. Think about doctors, right? Wouldn't it be great if they could actually perform surgery on something that is not really there and they could do it without actually screwing it up on a real person. Sounds pretty amazing. It is already a thing that's been used quite a fair bit, but I suspect it's gonna be used a lot more into the future. There are more. I'm well aware there's a whole bunch of other additional trends that are coming up. Stuff on quantum computing, robotics, automated vehicles and stuff. I mean, that is gonna be just massive. Renewable energy stuff and a whole bunch more. I mean, technology is exciting. I love tech, that's why I work in tech. And that's the end of this video, but do stay tuned for the next video where we continue talking about all things tech. We'll talk to you then. See you later.